venue. I yeah. was just like, I grab my controller, I walk over. If it's I need so something, nice. three minutes back to the room. Yeah, just walk right back up in between sets. All right, we've got a we've got like an early meta ultimate matchup here between Key Key Shark and Dung Jung. We've got the Inkling and the Snake, which. Uh, man, I mean, like, I mean, dating back to like the early parts of the game, this is something that like we expected to be seeing forever. And you know, one of these characters shows up pretty often; the other one, uh, maybe not as much. Yeah, Inkling was super prevalent in the early meta, and then kind of just dropped off the face of the planet. Definitely, like, a very good character, just not one that you see super often when you have a lot of the the characters that have tools that are just so much more useful than Inkling. I feel like Inkling is just very base game, doesn't have a lot of jank to go for, and so it can be very daunting going up against characters like Pyramithra that are just going to really outclass you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a character that has, like, a lot of the makings of what a good character needs, right? Like, has really mm -hmm. good movement, and hitboxes are relatively swift, not too committal either, and they cover a lot of good zones, but just not the best combo game, really struggles to get KOs, and that can be a really, really big problem against a character like Snake, who has a lot of weight to toss around and has a lot of chip damage to dish out as well. Yes, for sure. And it seems like right now, Keyshark's having a hard time dealing with these grenades, able to find an opportunity to get in and get that up air, but not going to be able to find a kill off of it. Ooh, Ooh accidental up B there, but not going to take the up tilt from it. Yeah. Uh, Jung uh, just throwing out that up tilt a little early, does not mess up that one, says, okay, I recognize last time that up tilt was a little bit misspaced, but forward tilt will not be missing, and then getting a little bit of extra credit immediately. And this is going to be the question for Keyshark, right, is... How are you going to take the stock? Now that you don't have rage, you can't just throw out something like a forward air, hope it blast zones. Now you need a setup, and you can't really rely on that roller because there's always going to be a grenade in play. Yes, that's true. And we're seeing a lot of shielding from Dungeon 2. It seems like it's just going to be really hard. Going to have to commit to a grab. But that can be really scary when Snake is just so strong in his damage output and also kill power here as well. And a lot of the time, he's holding a grenade. So even if you do get the grab, it's not going to work out in your favor. Mm -hmm. And look at the damage just rack up as well. 125. Just finishes out the jabs, doesn't get too greedy. I like that. Does end up blowing himself up with his own grenades, but does not yet put him in a precarious position because Keyshark's still trying to work on that first stock. A back row from center stage is not going to be nearly enough. Yeah, trying to fish in the air, maybe trying to find an up air, but it's just really hard to um, pin down Snake when he's in the air like that, especially when he's able to be reverse the grenade. It can just make his landing a lot more ambiguous, and so we're just really struggling to find the stock. And at this point, it's just one throw away for Snake to be able to take in a tech chase with a four tilt or something. But finally, Keyshark does get on the board with that back air, does take down that first Snake stock, but sitting at 182 again, just takes one throw, just takes one random up tilt or anything to take that stock. Dung Dung did not let it fly, but does eventually get the C4 to detonate that inkling right off the top. I do really like the way that Dung Dung is like hanging around the C4 on the platform too, using the platform to his advantage because it's making it a lot harder for Keyshark to get in, having to use aerials, whereas typically I feel like um, Inkling just really likes to resonate around the ground using like a lot of short hop nair to get things started or like poking with back air and that's not going to work out super well if you're on the uh, the platform. He's going to have to commit to a full hop instead and ooh, a great <laughs> combo there using the grenade into up air to take this game one. The daisy cutter into the launcher. Love that <laughs> double grenade explosion covers so much of the ground and then able to convert off of that really good start from Jung there and yeah, just a lot of the struggles that we kind of forecasted in this matchup with Inkling, right, is that you want to generally be able to play sort of like a hit and run style of game with this character and then, you know, just be able to chip and chip and chip away until something's going to kill eventually. You're almost always looking for something like that roller, but Snake's not really going to give you those opportunities yeah. when he's on the defense. Yeah, he's super defensive, and we're seeing that here, using a lot of just placing grenades on the ground, making Inkling chase him, and then using the grenades to get the combos, not really throwing out a lot of moves first, and so it's it's going to be really hard to kind of adapt um, Inkling's playstyle to work with that. And going back to Pokemon Stadium 2, not the biggest fan of this from an Inkling's perspective. I do think that you'd probably want something a little bit smaller. It does restrict your movement a bit as an Inkling, but does not give the snake as much space to run away from you. And frankly, uh, Inkling does have a lot of tools to stop Snake from being able to set up those zones and pressure him if he's trying to hang around those grenades because that neutral B, the splatter shot, mm. can detonate those grenades. I mean, early on, we thought that this was not that bad of a matchup for Inkling because, well, Snake loves to have his grenades around him at all times, and if he's holding one, splatter shot just detonates it. That's free damage, and you get some ink on him, but haven't seen that much, but 
So far, Keyshark off to a pretty decent start. Kind of similar to what we saw in game one, but question's going to be if he can actually get that first stock and get out to a lead. Yeah, because that was the biggest problem that we were seeing at the... Oh, yep, there it is again. Grenade into up air. But we saw that a lot earlier in the other game was that um, it kind of just snowballed. They were pretty even on the first stock, and then just being able to hold on to your stock for a long time as Snake, especially with how heavy he is, it's just very daunting to deal with when you are inkling. Now again, you're coming on a comeback trail as the inkling player here, which can be so tough. And knowing that that forward air is, I think, one of the only two aerials that can break Cypher along with the down air, I mean, Jung just needs to react to, okay, the inkling jumped at me and is facing me. I just need to know when that forward air is coming out. I can air dodge right through it. There's the roller, but the grenade was right there to save Jung. And then the C4 to take the inkling off the top immediately. Three stock to one lead, and it is turning from a molehill into a mountain for this inkling to climb. Yeah, that's pretty brutal there. Losing the stock and still not being able to find this first stock on Snake, sitting at 144, definitely trying to look for like a roller, but it's just not worked out with the grenades on the ground. Just great defensive oh play here from goodness. Jung uh, Dung Jung. And again, just great damage output too. Always hitting these confirms, so consistent with them. And you talk about the great defense. That was turning what was defense into offense, yeah. being, okay, you put yourself on that platform, I'm setting two grenades down next to you, and then I'm getting a confirm out of it as well. And I mean, if I know Snake players, Jung's looking for a goofy way to finish this game, if anything, <laughs> because three stock to one lead, Keyshark still hasn't been able to get one on the board, and there's only so much that you can do against Snake when you're playing a character that is trying to chip away at him. Down throw, trying to get a read on it, won't be able to confirm into the up tilt yet, but we're getting close to those percents. But Regia, you didn't catch the C4 on that platform. 2-0 victory for Dung Jung. Yeah, great defensive play there. Like you said, I think that was just the name of the game, was turning defense into offense. So consistently we were seeing just um, Keyshark trying to run across the stage and chase him down. And then he's just either in shield and able to get a confirm off of the grenade that he's holding or that is sitting right in front of him. Or he places them on the platforms, finds that up air, and just really consistent with those confirms. And it, it really paid off for him. Yeah, I, I think that part of what makes that matchup, you know, more bearable for Inkling is that you have that great movement and you can use that to threaten something without necessarily having to commit to throwing something out that is either going to get you punished or that you swing into a grenade or something like mm -hmm. that, right? You're able to use that movement to threaten that position and to be able to force the snake into doing something that maybe after that you'll be able to punish. But what we saw a lot of from Key Shark was just I see the snake in front of me, he's running away from me, and I'm playing from behind, so I want to go and try and hit him, yep. right? 